The Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 is the best Android tablet ever made. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you why, and then, unfortunately, we have to compare it to the iPad. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, who is, it's me, I'm the sponsor again. If you're looking to learn some design or illustration software, I have some discount codes for some of my courses located down below in the description. Don't pay full price, people. Anyway, onto the video. Hello, my name is Brad and I review tech for creative professionals. If that sounds like you, hit subscribe and ring that bell. Ew, okay, no, the bell looks disgusting. Change of plans, don't ring the bell. Let's just get on with the review. The screen looks fantastic. It's a super AMOLED display. It's just beautiful. The resolution here is 2,560 pixels by 1,600 pixels, which is larger than Full HD, but less than 4K. It, it is comparable to the iPad Air or the 11-inch iPad Pro. It's technically more pixels because it has a different shape. It's a bit longer than the iPad, but the screen itself is 10.5 inches corner to corner. It's a good size for drawing, big enough to fit all the tools from most apps while leaving you lots of room to draw. The tablet itself is pretty light. It weighs a little under a pound, it feels solid, it's really well built, it feels premium. Visually, it reminds me a lot of the iPad Pro. Last year's version was a little more rounded around the edges, this time they've squared off the corners around the screen, giving it a slightly more boxy look, but not quite as boxy as the new iPad Pros. There's also the addition of antenna lines along the back this year, very reminiscent of the latest iPads. The camera on the front makes its return and can be used to unlock the device with Samsung's facial recognition. Along the back, there are now two cameras. We get an ultra-wide camera and just a wide camera. One of those is 13 megapixels and the other one is 5 megapixels. And for a tablet, this takes some really nice pictures. <laughs> The S6 comes with a pen right there in the box, it doesn't cost a dime more. It's a nice touch, especially since Microsoft and Apple are both charging $100 plus for their pen. Of course, the Surface Pen usually drops in price after release, but a scientific study done by the Colbo Research and Metrics Polling Society found that people have a heavy preference for not paying out the nose for stuff. The Tab S6 has some added bells and whistles to the pen, the same ones we saw in the Note 10 a few weeks back. You can now use the pen to control your camera like a remote or use motion gestures to control your picture gallery. For the most part, these features feel a little bit gimmicky. I can see a use case here if you want to use a remote control to access your camera, or maybe you're doing a slideshow from across the table or something. I can see it being handy in those situations. The reason I call the gestures gimmicky is because it's just so much easier to just use the touch interface as it is. Uh, you can use the gestures, but you really have to exaggerate them to get them to work properly. Someone once said it was like swinging a tennis racket. You gotta swing the thing like a tennis racket. But that guy's nuts. Samsung is releasing an SDK to developers who want to take advantage of these S Pen features. If I had to bet on it, I would say the market's just too small to see a lot of developers spending a lot of time creating killer apps just for people who happen to have the S Pen and want motion controls. Activating the pen on the screen brings up some shortcuts in some of Samsung's S Pen designed apps like their Notes apps, their Screen Sketch, even the fancy AR Doodle makes an appearance here. Since they have added these remote control features and the pen now has Bluetooth capabilities, that means the pen needs a battery. Recharging the pen is built right into the back of the tablet. The pen magnetically fits into this little divot and it sucks the life out of your S6. Not all the life, just, just a tiny bit. What I wanted to know is can you attach the S Pen to the back and still carry it around? Let's see how well this thing stays on. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I would still probably place my hand on the tablet in such a way that it covers the pen so it just doesn't fall off or brush against my leg while I'm walking, but you know, it holds. The one thing that makes me a little nervous is I don't feel comfortable setting any of my tablets or phones face down on a table. I feel like that's just asking for a scratch. I'm probably worrying too much. The glass is or should be resistant to that sort of thing. So we're gonna put that in the box marked Brad's Irrational Concerns. The pen itself is smaller than previous years. It's not as thick. It isn't quite as comfortable to hold. It is light years more comfortable than the skinny one that they fit into the phones. Those are just a little too hard to hold if you're gonna have a long drawing session. We're talking more than 15 or 20 minutes. The good news here is that any S Pen will work on this drawing tablet. Even the older battery-free pens like this four-year-old discontinued Wacom pen I use. And yes, it, it even gives you the same accuracy, the same pen pressure. All of the drawing features are there in the older battery-free pens. Battery on the new S Pen is 
really just for those camera controls, those motion controls. And even if the battery dies, you can still keep drawing with the pen. Point for Samsung. Guys, guys, this is, this is not a game. We're not keeping score. Overall, the drawing feels pretty good. Samsung uses Wacom's tech, and so the pen has a good pedigree. Wacom is known for doing this stuff right. One downside of Wacom's tech is the palm rejection. It works most of the time, but occasionally you're gonna find some palm marks on your canvas, or you're gonna accidentally select the wrong layer. On Android, I don't find this as annoying as I find it on the desktop, on Windows, on a Mac, if I'm using a Wacom tablet. That's because in many apps, the layers and your tools are hidden away, so you do far less less damage with errant palm rejection than you do on the desktop. The line quality is pretty good. I get a straight line. It holds pressure well. There's no flare-ups at the end of the lines, quick lines, any shoestringing, all that stuff looks good. There is some pen wobble. Now, I have to preface this. I don't think it's the pen, and I don't think it's the screen. I think it's the way the pen interacts with the screen, and this is a little complicated, so I'm gonna talk about materials like rubber, glass, plastic, that sort of thing for a second. Plastic on glass is slick. It doesn't feel good to draw on. Your pen slides around. I, I don't like that feel. I don't have enough control. There just isn't enough texture, enough resistance to make me feel confident when I'm drawing. I mean, it works, but I much prefer drawing on a textured surface. This is one of the big downsides of the Apple Pencil on the iPad screen. And it's also the reason I'm a big fan of using matte screen protectors on my iPads. Samsung anticipated this with the S Pen. The pen nib is rubbery or very soft plastic. It slows your pen down on that slick glass and that's a big improvement. It definitely doesn't feel natural, but it gives you enough control to make it usable. And it's definitely way better than the plastic on glass feel, but not nearly as good as that textured feel. You know what? I'm gonna do something stupid. I'm gonna cut up this screen protector that was meant for the iPad. And I'm gonna give it a shot. There are two replacement nibs in the box. The white one here is harder. The other one is the same as the one that's currently in the pen. If I was gonna use this as my full-time tablet, I would get the screen protector on it, and then I would go with the white nib, the harder nib. And the main reason for that is I, I would imagine that the softer nib would just wear very quickly on a textured surface. Okay, let's try this out. Yes! All right, that feels better. I mentioned software in my Galaxy Note 10 Plus review a couple weeks ago. We're using the same exact apps here. Unlike Apple, where there's iPad apps and iPhone apps, all Android apps just scale to whatever screen size you have. Now you might be thinking, doesn't that like stretch and look bad and look horrible on the larger screen? Sometimes it does. In the case of drawing apps, that's not really a problem. You just have more space to draw in. In fact, it's kind of nice. Now, in case you didn't see my Galaxy Note 10 Plus review, here's a recap of my favorite drawing apps on Android as of September, 2019. Number one is Artflow. Currently at the top of my list, you can download it for free. It has in-app purchases. It's not that much money and I think it's well worth it. Number two, we got in Infinite Painter, it used to be number one, but Artflow has overtaken it in recent months. But I will say this, Infinite Painter has a two finger tap to undo gestures. So I'm thinking about moving back. We'll see, it's a good app. There's Autodesk Sketchbook, Old Faithful, a great app. Not my personal favorite, but definitely rock solid. Then there's Medibang. It can do anything and everything, and you could download it anywhere on most platforms. So if you need something that looks and feels more like a traditional desktop app, this, this might be where to go. And number five is Ibez Paint X. It's a fan favorite, totally worthy of being on this list. It's got some really nice inking tools. But first, it's time for the lightning round. That's right, everything that didn't have a place in this review, but I wanted to mention anyway. Speakers, they sound good. In fact, I might go so as far as saying they sound great. I, I think for a tablet, the speakers are very good. But there is no headphone jack. I got mad at the iPad Pro for this, so I'm gonna do the same thing here too. Grr, I am mad at you, Samsung. I tried, I tried my best. That's, I don't do anger. I did say in my phone review that the lack of a headphone jack didn't really bother me. I don't know why it doesn't bother bother me on the phone, but it bothers me on the tablet. I think there's two reasons for that. One, I can see a reason not to have a headphone jack on a phone because space is limited. It's a much smaller device. On a tablet, 
You don't really have that excuse. Also, on a tablet, I tend to work on it for long stretches of time, so I want to plug in my nice headphones. I don't want to have the little buds in my ears. I want something more comfortable and something that just sounds better. I don't know. Some people like it, some people won't. Next thing. They did find a way to keep the micro SD expansion slot. For security, you have a fingerprint scanner and facial recognition. It's available in three colors. I like gray because I don't know. Gray, cool. I did not pick up the keyboard cover. It's $180 more, that's almost as much as Apple's keyboard cover, and it does have an interesting pen divot on it. I don't, there's something about this when I first saw it that I just thought it was weird and kind of funny. It's one of those things that's just not a big deal, but it seems to me like Samsung designed the tablet and thought, oh, the pen will charge on the back, and then afterwards handed it to another team and said, design a cover for it, and they were like, ah, what do we do with the pen thing? Oh, a bump. Oh, one more thing, if you want an LTE version of this tablet, it's gonna be released later this year, so cool. I know there are people who hate it when I compare Samsung products to Apple products, but I think when we're talking about tablets, the iPad seems to be the undisputed king and or queen of the space, so, so we have to. So it's been four years since the iPad Pro came out, and at the time, my critique was, hey, this is a good companion app. The hardware's great, but the apps are just kind of sketching coloring apps. I guess a good way to say it is, I felt that the apps were for hobbyists. They weren't hardcore art apps. So that was four years ago, and that has changed. It has changed a lot. I'm not yet ready to jump on that boat of people who are saying that the iPad is a full-blown laptop, replacement. I tried that in another video, went okay. I think it's getting there, but I think when you compare it to this, it's a heck of a lot closer, and, and what it comes down to isn't so much the hardware and what the hardware can do, it's all about software. Procreate has come of age, we've gotten full desktop apps like Clip Studio ported over, Affinity has brought us photo and designer to the iPad, both are truly amazingly deep pro-level apps. Apple's about to release Sidecar that turns the iPad into a second screen for your Mac. Allegedly, Adobe will eventually, maybe if we're lucky, release Photoshop? Please, Adobe, any day now? And on Android, you know, not much has really changed in the last three years. I think you can say that the apps have gotten better, but they've gotten incrementally better. The apps are maybe 10 to 20% better than they were three years ago when I reviewed my very first Android tablet. And in that time, the iPad Pro has slowly but surely become Pro. And yeah, that has way more to do with the companies who are making the apps for the device than anything that Apple's done. For whatever reason, we haven't seen that come to Android yet. The hardware is there for it to happen, but the software isn't there yet. So at the end of the day, I have to give Samsung props. They have made the best Android tablet ever. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching until the end. I really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.